Hello, Swivelheads. It's Greg Allison, Swivelhead News, coming to you late live. The question before us is, right now, is Russia and Belarus, principally Belarus, maybe initially set to attack NATO, like imminently? Some people think so, because uh, Lekinchenko, the president, some people call him the self-appointed president of Belarus, was just at the Zawalki Gap uh, side of the Belarus, meeting with his generals and staff wearing a kind of fatigueish uniform and currying his generals, and they were replying to him that, yes, they were ready. They're ready to attack. They got their plans in order. Yes, their plans, and that they're ready to execute them. Does that mean they will do it? I don't know, my friends, but it does mean that your eyes better be wide open. Your head better be on a swivel right now because things could get bad very fast. Uh, they have equipment there. They have just put in something like uh, 1.7 1 1 uh, million uh, you see the gallons or tons of fuel and storage out there. They've got all, uh, they've even been aggregating sand out there, be used in sandbags. Uh, the uh, Russians might respond. See, the Zawalki Gap is the target. The Zawalki Gap is only, what, maybe uh, four, 40 kilometers long. It's not a very long gap between Kaliningrad, that piece of Russia that exists in the middle of some NATO countries with Lithuania over here and Poland over here and Belarus down here. Well, there's a NATO corridor presently from Poland to Lithuania. Well, they might want to cut that off so they have their own continuous uh, corridor between that uh, NATO landlocked and NATO now sea locked, Baltic Sea, which is almost a NATO sea now that all the Nordic nations have joined NATO. Uh, so uh, the whole strategy would be to uh, seize the gap. And there's really not much that could stop them if they decide to do that now. Now, if uh, the word's out and NATO prepares for it, that might not be the case. The thing is that NATO's been kind of suspecting that. Those papers that was released from Germany uh, that talked about the war plans originally stated that they were looking for something like this in 2025. Although uh, a later rendition come out that was suggested around the election time this year. But yet, of course, if the the the, the po, uh, excuse me, if the Belarusians and the Russians waited to then, then they would have an element of surprise, right? Well, well, they currently steadfast defender is in action, and steadfast defender has like ninety thousand troops and navy guys, but they're not all right there. But Germany is sending troops in the area uh, on the Polish side. Poland's getting ready, uh, but they're not fully. They don't have enough stuff there yet to be able to stop. A uh, surprise attack, surprise split, uh, blitzkrieg that might be initiated by Belarus and maybe from the other side by Russia, meeting in the middle where each side would only have 20 kilometers to go if that's what they choose to do. Uh, there is, you know, there's some counterpoints to this. Uh, Putin has made some statements that kind of weigh in that, you know, this is where they're going. But then again, it could be 40 chess. And as you know, prior to the invasion of Ukraine, uh, Putin was always saying those troop buildups were just for, uh, they were just there for training exercises, you know, to put them all on the border. And then he came up with a great announcement, oh yeah, we're going to pull them back, the exercises are, we're going to bring our boys home, and then he hit them with the invasion. So don't take what they say, but you know, the fact that they had amassed blood supplies on the border at the time, told a lot of us that yeah, they were going in. So uh, I am going to see who's in the chat room here real quick, I'm just opening this side up. So hang on, guys. We are going to uh, go into the news articles here. We're going to go through this and other news. Yeah, the only, you know, this whole thing in Russia isn't the only thing. But guys, what we're talking about here, why this is important is this would put Belarusian troops, Russian troops, whatever, going into either Lithuania or Poland. But what uh, the Belarusian general was talking about was both countries, both countries. We could be seeing an invasion into two NATO nations. This would invoke Article 5 and pull us into a conflict with Russia. United States by Article 5. This is ta We're talking, we get into World War III. How far this would go? How would it escalate? I don't know, guys. We'd already heard. We'd already heard conversations from uh, the, the Russian side saying, well, 
uh, I think it was uh, Petr, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, anyway, whatever. Uh, these guys were talking about, well, we, we, we couldn't fight NATO conventionally. We would have to use tactical nukes. Would they? Is this just part of the posturing they've been doing all along? Let's hope that's the case. Because they could actually take that gap if they have the element of surprise and move fast because it is such a small distance. Uh, that could happen. So right, we got a fair number in here for this late hour. That's good to see. All right. So uh, I'm going to go through the news. And, of course, as usual, once I get through the news part, I'll attend to the chat room before we go into the weather stuff that bores the coffee uh, drinkers, the morning coffee drinkers that are uh, getting breakfast by my news here. Mm. And I got to ask them to keep my eyes wide open. All right, guys. So, yeah, we may be on the very verge any day now of World War III having America involved in it. Uh, how fast could this escalate? Would this provoke other countries to do bad things? Oh, yeah, uh, Serbia is looking at attacking Kosovo. Why? Because Kosovo is about to get a membership in the EU, and Serbia doesn't recognize Kosovo as an independent nation. This would open up a whole other uh, theater for war inside of Europe. And... Uh, as we know, uh, little Kim over in uh, North Korea, he's kind of chomping at the bit. Uh, the tensions with uh, between the Philippines and China are going up. Uh, China has just set up uh, mock areas from the Taipei, which is the capital of Taiwan, to practice running the tech drill zone. Uh, guys, it's it's getting intense all around the world, just all at once. And if one if the the Belarusians move, they may have a guarantee to help them out that some of these other countries would make a move too. Because the more of them get involved, the more moves that get made all at once, the less uh the less uh well, the more we're going to, have to spread around, the less we can focus on any one given area. So if the whole world's going up in fire, we got to spread our forces so thin it won't be pretty for the American side especially since we've already been using a lot of our uh, ammunition, sending it to Ukraine, and sending a lot of our stuff to, to, to uh, pay whack-a-mole against the Houthis. The Houthis, you know, that we keep whacking at them, but they keep popping up elsewhere and keep firing the same stuff. They don't slow down one bit. They don't miss a beat, even though we're using a lot of our precious ammunition there. So uh, it's uh, getting really serious, guys. It's getting serious fast. This thing has been escalating. It's been growing. Israel's talking about uh, hitting uh, Hezbollah. Israel has said, hey, without the American backing, they can't really take out Hamas. They're saying Hamas was bigger than they thought it was. There's actually more Hamas troops than they thought Hamas had. Well, so much for the uh, so much for their intelligence, right? Yikes, so much for the Mossad. What did they miss? So, uh, Jason says, Putin can't justify using nukes according to current Russian law he likes. Yeah, there's got to be like an existential threat to Russia. Although part of the Russian law, and I actually went to the Kremlin website and read it to you guys directly what their criteria was for nuclear war. It included attacks on their nuclear triad. And Ukraine's actually been hitting some of the Russian strategic nuclear bombers. So they could say that's been checked off. I don't know, guys. So let's hope we don't get to that point. Let's hope it don't happen. But uh, especially let's hope it don't go nuclear more than anything else. And let's hope the sleeper cells in this country from all these other lands don't get triggered. That would be worse probably than a nuclear war. Believe you me, I've done videos covering what the, the devastation of bringing our power grid down. It is worse than a lot of people can imagine. All right, guys. So uh, we're going to go into the articles here. We're going to go straight into the articles. Before we do that, I want to throw, throw out one other thing. With all this pandemonium, our dollar is sliding, especially since the BRICS are work, chomping at the bit to come up with alternate currency. Uh, and, and our dollar is sliding, guys. It's part of the economic warfare, which is part of the WW3 against America by a whole slew of countries. And, and they got a whole lot more of them trying to join BRICS. Well, let's put downward pressure on the dollar. But new, gold has gone up in value. Look at this, guys, right here. Gold is 2,234.76 cents as of this posting per troy ounce. Wow. It has gone up. It's gone up quite a bit. 
you know, I predicted this might happen because I'm expecting the dollar to, to fall and fall some more. So I don't know if the trends continue, you might see this go up some more. Might be a good time to think about getting some of these gold backs or something like this. So if you go to Defy the Grid, they got a deal here. If you find a better price somewhere else, they'll meet it or beat it. So why go anywhere else? Defy the Grid. And you can get 1% off if you use the code Green Gregs. Use the discount code Green Gregs. You'll get 1% off. And that's what I get, which is a very, very tiny commission, but still, I think it's an important thing to consider. So, uh, wow, you actually got a pop-up notification. Awesome. That's rare, right? <laughs> so here it is. Lukinchenko discusses possible attack on the Sawalki Gap. Here he is with his fluffy little dog. You know, remember those uh, uh, cartoon dictators, you know, like uh, from James Bond, they always had a white fluffy cat. And that was even, even Inspector Gadget cartoon kind of mocked that. You know, the, the bad guy in there always had a white fluffy cat too, right? <laughs> well, I guess he didn't have a cat, but he's got his white fluffy dog. <laughs> I don't know. Does this make him one of the evil uh, villains like in a James Bond or Inspector Gadget cartoon? I don't know, guys. But uh, he don't seem to have quite the personality of a Dr. No. But who knows? He's talking about launching war here. So, um, in any event, this is what's going on. Luck and Chico asks his military commander where they can hold the territory with his troops, that is, after they go in. And uh, Namiko assures him that all actions, get this, all actions have been planned. Issues of combat readiness are being worked out and personnel are being trained. You see this? So they're talking, he's he's at the gap there. There he is in his kind of a, a fatigueish looking uniform, a little thick for fatigues, but I don't know what passes for that. In Belarus, uh, there was a video here from Get Past the Ad. Yikes, we got an ad going here. Oh. Oops, I don't want to play the sound and catch that ad. Let's get this thing off. There he is, Belarus dictator discusses invading Poland. That's his general there we just mentioned. Lithuania sees a gap, supposedly. Checking his troops are ready to carry. Now, this is narration. It's not here. So we don't treat. Hang on. Let's go back one. So that we do not treat in a simplified way we must know for sure and that's he's trying to get the assurance what they want and how much do they talk about uh the surveil corridors at this time i guess he's talking about the Sawalki gap and so what those corridors how many kilometers to russia uh to the Kaliningrad region is what he's talking about from russia uh, from our borders he knows that distance that's kind of an odd question there 42 kilometers directly. You see him looking up, asking these guys, like, are you sure? He's saying a straight line in vain to behave like this. So, you know, he's talking about the other side, so we need to hit him. But at the moment, you will have to resist the Baltic Republics. So they're talking about dealing with the Baltic Republics. And you're taking over part of Poland. You are taking over part of Poland. See that? There is a small part. North, part, northeast, that's what he's saying. Just a part of Poland. Just a small part. North, northeast. Are you sure that this territory is on the front? He asked. And you will keep it with your troops. Are you sure it's on? There you go. This is where he says, there are military planning documents. All actions are planned. That's how his general is answering. All actions are planned. The questions of combat readiness are being worked out and personnel are being prepared, including what is provided, set by your instructions. Well, get that. So he's already gave instructions for this. Is now being executed. What does this mean, guys? And the disposal of the Minister of Defense and the framework of the preparations of fortifications 
of the regions. We do not just go to the areas of field entry and the areas of exercises. We are now in the rear area so that the so that the personnel of the officers come on know the terrain, know the roads, know where and how and what. See guys, so they can make decisions on the terrain and be ready for real actions. All right, guys. So what does that mean? What does that mean, pray tell? Here are Belarusian uh, forces rushing to the border there. I understand a similar video of uh, German forces and the Russian ambassador to Poland left his post. Says he'll be back in April. Well, will he? Maybe that's his excuse as he runs out so they won't detain him. He evacuated. Now, according to some sources, he left just because he didn't want to answer the questions about that little errant missile from Russia that flew for, what, 37 seconds over Polish territory on its way into Ukraine. But is he leaving? Now, is that enough reason just to turn tail and run and leave the country? When an ambassador leaves the country, that's a great matter. That's what you might expect them to do prior to war. This may be a sign that the war is to come. Maybe. I'm not saying it is. I am not saying it's a foregone conclusion. But there are some signs here that don't look well, that don't bode well at all. And this article, this is from one of those released papers, I think, here. Russia's next target in Europe is the Sawalki Gap could start mission during U.S. elections. Now, see, this is at some of those leaked German documents here. And uh, earlier they said uh, next year, they said 2025. Well, now these leaked documents are coming out with more information and say it could be during the U.S. election, which would suggest this fall. But maybe they would want to do it beforehand. You know, they're figuring the United States would be highly distracted at this point in time, supposedly. But then again, if you're going to hit somebody, you don't do it when everybody's expecting you to. You got no element of surprise. To win, you need element of surprise. So that's what this is talking about. See, the, the Alliance Defense uh, 2025 paper pretend, uh, portends Russia start uh, starting calling up 200,000 reservists by February 2024. So we've already passed that milestone. Supposedly, there are 20,000 Belarusian troops there on the border of the Suwalki Gap, maybe as many Russians on the other side, 40,000 total between them. Uh, leaked German documents uh, sketches out Russian war scenario. This is the one that we saw earlier. Berlin's secret war game exercise ends with NATO mobilizing 300,000 troops to defend its eastern flank by next May. Now, they were talking about any of the... Uh, Steadfast Defender exercise in May. Well, I've, actually, if you go into the website for Steadfast Defender, they're actually showing exercises going up through June now. Hmm, interesting. Uh, and this is just more on this, and also uh, Lukashenko saying that, hey, you know, those uh, guys that attacked the theater were actually headed toward Belarus. Now, really, I don't know. It's kind of countering against Russia. Why did he say that? I don't know. Maybe part of fifth fourth or fifth dimensional chess. I have no idea, but uh, this is interesting. What's well, cooking here, guys, because uh, Putin is blaming the U.S. That makes it even more contentious. So this is the Zawalki Gap. It's just a narrow area. You got Poland on this side, Lithuania on this side. Both are NATO nations. This is NATO territory. This is the only land bridge for NATO to get supplies into the Balkan nations, which are NATO countries and members of the EU, as you can see. Over here, this is Russia, Kliningrad. Used to be Prussia, part of Russia. Down here is Belarus. This is where Lukashenko and a whole lot of his troops are at. What's over here on the Russian side? Oh, yeah, they got probably a bunch of S-300 and S-400 uh, anti-aircraft missiles should NATO try to uh, re reply with air power. Those things are deadly uh, to aircraft. Mm. World War III threat. Putin believes West was involved in Russian tea attack. 
sparking retaliation fears, experts warn. Well, they're trying to pin this now on the United States being behind it because they claim the United States uh, happened to blame it on uh, ISIS-K really fast. And they claim they didn't have enough time to do the research. And then they pointed that finger so fast that they think that is highly suspicious from the Russian side. Russia claims West and Kiev ordered that attack. So this article says they got problems proving it. Well, that was yesterday's article or day before yesterday now. Uh, the Russians have come out and elaborated on that some more since. Talking why they believe the United States was involved in it. And, of course, uh, the Russians had also come out and said they would punish anyone involved. So if it's the United States, how they intend to punish. Now, it turns out that Ukraine apparently has disabled the Kerch Strait Bridge, which is the uh, sole bridge corridor. Uh, well, it's not the sole corridor, but it is the main corridor for access between uh, Russia, like Rostov on Don region, the Rostov Oblast that's been supplying things into that area, and uh, Ukraine, and Crimea, excuse me, Crimea. So, which, you know, what used to be Ukraine at one point in time before Russia seized it in 2014. Uh, 300 pounds, 30 pounds of pemmican, that's great. <laughs> Throw a chew through the, uh, through the video here. <laughs> Russian flotilla advances in the Mediterranean. Why are they in the Mediterranean? But they're also in the Red Sea. Chess pieces are moving, guys. Chess pieces are moving. Why? Why is the Russian flotilla moving into the Mediterranean and the Red Sea? That's interesting. Uh, now, this article says, well, Germany is going to put troops in Lithuania for the first time since World War Three, uh, two, excuse me. But they're saying they would locate them by 2027. Yeah, 5,000 troops. That's a, that's a man short and a day late, by my uh, humble opinion. So uh, I'm not taking sides here. I'm just, you know, saying that's if that's what they're planning that don't rise to the occasion of what might be in front of them here. Um, Putin now is saying, uh, I won't start a war with NATO, but Western bases hosting the F-16s will be targets. But then again, is this like his? Now, this is an interesting claim from Putin. Because this kind of suggests he's not really planning to do anything. Unless there's some F-16s coming, so it makes it sound he's not planning to make any attacks. Of course, that also, uh, the fact he just come out and said this kind of rings like, uh, hey, we're not moving into uh, Ukraine. In fact, we're withdrawing right now and the next day he hits. I don't know, guys. Is What kind of a game are they playing here? I have no idea. Uh, but see, NATO's talking about having a, a no-fly zone. For Ukraine. Now, that would definitely uh, frost the Russians. How do you do that? You got to shoot down Russian airplanes with what, NATO assets? Let's see how that goes. Right, well, guys, we've got so many ways we may be heading into war here. You know, we're talking about the, uh, you know, here's another article on the, the German brigade being s sent by 2027. Like I said, it's probably a day late. And they don't even meet their own timeline. They were talking, the timeline from those leaked papers. Uh, this is past that. So why is Germany sending out leaked papers and then saying they're going to be there by 2027? I don't know, guys. It's all really strange how the timing don't seem to mess up, uh, sync up. But never fear. Oh, yeah. President Taterhead, he's got a plan. He's got a plan. He's going to take this uh, money. He's going to tax from the rich, $400 billion over the next 10 years, and that's how he's going to pay for defending Ukraine, $400 billion over the next 10 years. Of course, he rattled off in the State of Union address, oh, what, about a half a dozen other programs he was going to pay for out of that $400 billion. The problem is that's $40 billion. You know, there was a couple of problems with that because, one, that's a high tax rate on these people, and that's a whole other debate. But, it all, you know, it just proves that Taterhead and the Democratic Party can't add. They don't know math. Because that's only $40 billion a year if they get it. And how much have they already spent on Ukraine? Oh, uh, at least over $113 billion, And that don't uh, count for the money we're going to have to spend 
to replenish the munitions that we sent over there. So the real number is already far bigger than that in what? Two years, mostly in the last year. So how does $40 billion a year cover that? It don't. Again, I say these guys don't know math. It just proves it. It just goes to prove that these guys can't add. They can't subtract. They don't know simple. Did they go to first grade? <laughs> Second grade? Third grade? I don't know. They don't act like it. Or, you know, they just assume that people, uh, we're so dumb we won't figure it out. That's what it really boils down to as far as I can guess. And you know what? A lot of people won't, especially their supporters. Uh, anyway, here we go. The American explanation for the Moscow terror attack doesn't add up. This is where they're saying... And this is an RT. This is an Ruski side. This is where they're saying the uh, United States was behind this. That's what this is really, really, really coming out with. The United States government's version of the Islamic State connection with the attack has been met with skepticism by Russian officials and commentators. Firstly, they were surprised at how quickly, virtually within minutes, Washington pointed a finger at the group. And also drew attention to Russian observers that the U.S. referenced the uh, ISIS link news site, which claimed responsibility for the crime. Normally, all such sources are subjected to thorough checks, but not this time. Uh huh. So, you know, they, 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 they're really criticizing it. Liar, liar, pants on fire. That's what they're saying. So, they're really saying the United States now. They're, we're blaming Ukraine now. They're pointing the finger at the United States. You see how this stuff can escalate, guys? This is not a pretty situation. It is not a pretty situation at all. And see, the thing is, uh, the uh, attackers supposedly were Tajiks. And Russia's also throwing shade at that now because they're saying we're trying to divide them from the Taj Tajiks. I can't even talk right now. <laughs> so from Tajikistan. Because Tajikistan is where Russia is getting a whole lot of their recruits for their uh, special operation, which they're now calling a war. Uh, but Vladimir Putin may only be weeks away from a breakthrough in Ukraine. Uh, there's some sources that are saying that they expect Kiev may fall by this summer, that, you, that Ukraine may fall this summer, that Russia is really planning to hit, head up a big drive. Anyway, steadfast defender, like I said, they were talking, you know, here it is. This is some of the stuff they claim there's 90,000 troops, and some of these are at sea, which won't help the Zawalki Gap situation. Uh, 31 nations involved, NATO allies and Sweden. Well, Sweden is now part of NATO, I believe. I think all that's gone through. Uh, 80 aircraft and 1,110 tanks. Well, Russia's got more than that, guys. How much would they appropriate to this? What would Belarus appropriate to that? I don't know. But the whole thing, this thing was supposed to just go to May. There's a timeline there somewhere. It is. If we uh, scroll this thing over, you'll see. Uh, uh, you'll see. Whoa, I went too far. You'll see it going through some parts of it going through June the 12th. Swift response 24. That part runs to they got various exercises and activities in here that are part of this plan, but they show it going through May the 12th. I don't know, guys. What do y'all think? Also, this is this is the whole thing of uh the situation between uh Serbia and Kosovo. That's what this is about. That's saying these two nations may be in war within two days. And then, to make it even more interesting, the Philippine president warns of countermeasures in response to Chinese aggression at sea. Now, they'll send it be tit for tat. Maybe they'll turn water cannons back. But you can quickly see how this could escalate in China, South China Sea. Like I said, it may not start with Taiwan. It may start with the Philippines. But as I mentioned earlier, China has a mock-up of Kiers in the Taiwan's capital. It's called Taipei. And this is uh, kind of the central main area in Taipei. They've laid the streets out there to uh, run attack drills. 
As you recall, they've already had the uh, USS Ford mapped out in the desert. They did attack drills on our aircraft carriers. And it got you thinking about long-term uh, food supplies. I don't know what to do. You can check out prepwithgreg.com and specials there. If you're interested in that and other prepping supplies, like water purification, you can get there, air purification. Anyway, guys, prepwithgreg.com. All right. New poll suggests tenure. This is the good news for my Canadian buddies in here, Arnold and such. It looks like the polls aren't in favor of, of Castro Trudeau. And say it may his era may be coming to an end, and that uh, he uh, the conservatives are leading his party by 18 points so far supposedly. Of course, who knows how that will play out? But all right, guys, I'm changing topics now. City dwellers voted to release wolves in the Colorado on the ranchers, the farmers. And now their GPS trackers are failing what they're trying to chat, track these wolves with. So they got these collars on. That also means if you take out a wolf, they'll know where you got them at and they will find you to the nth degree. And I know in Arizona, if a uh, mountain lion or wolf is attacking your livestock, you're not supposed to do anything about it. You can be fined so much it's not funny. And the same thing apparently is the case in Colorado. And so you'd think that the trackers would be to help you know where they're at. No, you don't know where they're at. Only the game guys do. But now they're losing their GPS trackers, too. Now, it might be advantageous to the rancher if they see the tracker's not on the wolf. But, uh, guys, you know, how would you like to have predators thrown out at you and your livestock by a bunch of city dwellers that don't know anything about farming and ranching? You know, your ancestors worked to get rid of these uh, threats. And now they're just going to turn them loose on you. What did I, you know, I just did that video on, on Green Gregs talking about threats to farming and agriculture, especially in blue states. And what happens? Oh, yeah, that video only got about half as many views as my normal videos over there do. Because anytime I talk about agriculture, farming, or gardening, or worms, even now, it, it don't get me many views. It, it really underperforms badly, which hurts my algorithms, suggesting I shouldn't even cover such topics over there. Anyway, I don't know, guys. So, uh, you know, but it kind of makes me think city dogs. Well, they know about farming. Well, they know that they think all their food comes from a grocery store. They don't realize they're attacking their own food supply. Yeah, they voted for this. Yeah, how about that? And the vote, of course, is dominated by the people in Denver. These city slickers who come out of mostly California. A lot of them did. Well, most of them, a lot of them did especially once they passed the legalization bills up there. It really changed the political nature of Colorado and shifted it blue. But here's the, here's the thing to bear in mind. These city slickers, like I said, they don't know nothing about where their food comes from, what it takes to get it. Maybe they don't care until they can't get it. Of course, they'll probably be, those, are blue guys, those blue boys will probably be happy to eat Z-bugs. So... Why did they do it? Oh, they're trying to help the environment there, Bobby. That's what they think. Uh, yeah, wolf's well, got a fair bit of range, but, you know, guys, here's the thing. Oh, yeah. I used to have a lot of fun with city slickers when I was a kid. The boys from town would come visit the farm. Uh, it would be a rather shocking experience for them because they didn't know what an electric fence was. And as a kid, it rather pull a prank on somebody and eat when I was hungry. Oh, yeah. I got a whole bunch of them shocked out there on the farm with an electric fence. I had all kind of electric fence tricks to pull on them. And I used to tell them all kind of tales about cows. You know, we had an old milk cow. You know, we raised polled Herefords. Our cattle was mostly polled Herefords, including our bull, which meant it didn't have a horn. But we used a Jersey cow for a milk cow, and she had horns. We had a Guernsey before that. I don't think the Guernsey had any horns, but the Jersey did. And, uh, all the city boys always thought that was the bull because it had horns. I always thought that was funny. So I guess, <laughs> yeah, I hope they wouldn't want to milk a bull. But anyway, they always thought our cow, our female cow was a, we, you know, we didn't call female male cows. If we, when we used the word cow, it meant female typically on the farm. If we used a you know, bull, that was his own designation. Of course, we also called cows heifers. Uh, and that was mainly the younger ones. 
But uh, I'd always tell them, you know, a milk cow got four teats. And I always tell these city slickers, I always say, well, look, two of them for white milk, one's for chocolate milk, and one's for orange juice. And he'd like look at me, oh, wow. <laughs> I'd say, and then how do you get the milk? i say, you pump its tail. You pump its tail and the milk comes out. They'd believe it. <laughs> I used to have all kind of junk. I used to have fun messing with them. I'd tell them anything, you know, and they'd go, oh, wow. Poor guys. So that's the guys who are making, that's the kind of guys who are making these decisions. You see that? So why is it that we got so many states like Illinois, mostly farmland, but the guys in Chicago tell the farmers what to do and how to live. And a lot of that's true in, uh, uh, through vast swaths of California, too. It's the big cities that rule the state and really mess up the lives for the farmers. And up in Maine, even, it's uh, the guys in Portland, Maine, or in uh, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, that are messing up stuff for the farmers in those areas. Seattle and Tacoma for the folks up in Washington State. Uh, in the rural areas where you got farmers and ranchers, they tend to be a lot more conservative, but they're outvoted by the city slickers. Oh, well, I think some of these counties need to split off and form their own states if they find a way to do it. Pink cow for strawberry milk. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's it. Oh, yeah, the black cow makes chocolate milk. That's what they would think sometimes, too, right? Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, poor city slickers, but yet they're the ones telling farmers how to live and work and operate their farms. Jeez, you know nothing about it. So, but that's okay. We got immigrants to handle our workforce now. Fifty-one million cumulative. There's the chart. This this. This was under the Trump area. They went down, and right when after Trump lost the election, you can see they started surging back up when Biden won. And then what happens under the, the President Taterhead's administration? Way up. Way up. So they're saying 51.4 million is the number as of February 2024 which is about 15% of our population, guys, as a country. They claim it's 20% of the workforce. I don't doubt it, because when I look around here, they're all over the place. They are all over the place. So, wow. Oops. I think I closed an article out. Yeah, this is the United States population and demographics and from uh, Wikipedia. You know, uh, back in the 50s, uh, the United States was like 90% of the Caucasian race, and the black race was the second most populous. And now, Latino is the uh, second most populous. Latinos have grown out, you know, they're now bigger than the black guys. So the black guys are no longer the dominant minority. Shows where their concentrations are. I don't know. I see a lot of them here. Uh, shows a concentration of the well, black population. Let's go back. I ain't got a map for the white folks. That's interesting. I mean, there we go. So if it's for whites, why is it blue? <laughs> Does blue mean white? I don't know. For whatever it is or isn't worth, I did a video talking about this, talking about how our country is going to be is changing rapidly and then it's never going to be what we knew as a kid. So we need to try to get some of these people coming in. You know, if they're criminals, they need to go back out. If they come here because they don't love this country, they need to go. Otherwise, we need to uh, spread the message of the hope of freedom, the value of freedom. Now, President Taterhead, apparently, according to this article, American Military News, is planning amnesty for millions of them. This is from uh, the Border Patrol Union president saying this. I don't know, guys. Is it, will he do it in time for the election so he get more votes for the election? Uh, we've been, you know, every election has been decided recently by like, what, 1% of the voters mostly? 
time and time again. Yikes. But the Border Patrol is not particularly happy. This one retired agent says that all his work for 31 years is all for nothing. So he worked for the Border Patrol for 31 years, and it's all been washed away. Wow. Of course, you know, it's led to, like, you remember that video I showed you, the, the guy begging people to come play squatters and take American homes. Illegal squatters threaten American dream of home ownership is Congress. You, you know, how, you know, like how Congress is the opposite of progress. Fails to act. Jeez. All righty, guys. Now we'll change the news again. Melting polar ice cap is slowing Earth's rotation with possible consequences for timekeeping. Here's your good everyday daily global warming alarmist news. Oh, uh, but what? Oh, the problem is Earth's spinning faster. What? Wait a minute. They're telling us the Earth is going slower. But in astronomy, the scientists are telling us the Earth is spinning faster. This is a more recent article. What, this came out 14 hours ago is when I pulled this up. The world is speeding up, and we might need a negative leap second. So how is it speeding up when it's slowing down? Hey, Al Gore, you get this? Is this, uh, yeah, I guess our Arctic is ice-free now? Well, I don't know, guys. What do y'all think? They tell us the seas are hotter than ever. If that's the case, why is the land colder? We got all these solar flares, solar activity. We should be heating up. Mm. And weather. What's it done? Crippled a massive solar farm in Texas, sparking concerns about the vulnerable green tech. Wow. What do y'all think? Uh-oh. And from our buddies down under, Rodney in the house, we got anybody else from, uh, hey, Samuel Turner, good to see you here in the wee hours of the morning, April, May, best weather for amphibops. That's right. We're, we're, we're coming up on the verge of when it will be the best time for China to move in. Isn't it amazing how all this is lining up? What would you expect? Exactly. Samuel Turner is on top of it. That man is brilliant. So, of course, the head of BlackRock, who is super rich, and got it made. He's telling you to work till you drop. You don't need no stinking retirement. And somebody didn't tell him that the retirement age ain't 65 no more, not for full retirement. It's 67 by Social Security. But who, what does he know? BlackRock CEO Larry Fink. He was the one that's pushing that uh, ESG mess, you know, big time until... Uh, so the public came in and spanked them hard for it with uh, the boycotts on uh, uh, what was that Miller what, Miller Bud Light yeah Bud Light. So this is an article from Brian Wang. Brian Wang may be onto something here. Jeez, you know. But you know another thing, guys. As you're getting older, it's harder to work. Some people are not taking that account. It's harder to get work. You know, they don't always want to hire the older people because uh, they typically have to pay them a little bit more. And, you know, it's a lot of employers don't want to do that. They're going for the younger folks when they can, typically. It's one of the things I'm facing. But I might I might have a ray of hope for me. I'll talk about that in a little bit here when we get through all this new stuff. All right, here's the eclipse across the United States. Why don't you see where it comes in at? Let's see if we can go in and sometimes you can click on this and we'll. Oh, yeah. Eagle Pass is where it comes in the United States. What's Eagle Pass? That's the place of contention down there where, uh, where Texas first put in a razor wire. This is where all the immigrants were coming across. Isn't that interesting that this is where it enters the country, where the immigrants are entering the country? Wow. Of course, it goes through Waco. Mount Pleasant, Texarkana. Maybe I can find myself on a trip to Arizona coming through here. That's I-40 there. That's the route I used. I, I go this route going back and forth to Arizona most usually, except the last trip where I came back through Texas and got stuck in Planet Houston. And it exits 
at another border right over New Day's house. Houghton, Maine. Look at that. So that's where it exits at. All right, we'll look at some of these earthquakes. A little bit of news. Won't go into the windy. Guys, we got some earthquakes in diverse places here. That's Germantown, Illinois. That's real close to the uh, New Madrid Fault. We got one in uh, Arcadia, Oklahoma. Of course, we got our obligatory earthquake right here, either in southeast Me uh, New Mexico or in West Texas. Let's see. Toya, Texas. Oh, uh, Toya, Texas gets a lot of ascension. Mexico, I'm probably not saying that right. Uh, then here close to the San Andres. Oh, what's that? Guyers, California. And up here at uh, Jellystone Park. 2.7, close to Jellystone. Alaska's getting somewhere here in the Aleutian Islands, as is typical. Valdez again. Valdez has been rocking. But, you know, Indonesia tends to have the bigger ones out here in you know, this area. And indeed, this here at uh, Port Vela, Vanatu. There have been a lot of them right here lately. You got some out here in uh, Marina Islands, 5.0. Indonesia's not rocking as much as normal. Afghanistan's had a lot of activity. Wait, this outer one here was a 5.1. Now we got one off the shore. Greece, 5.8. That's a pretty big one. Mid-Atlantic Ridge, 4.8. And the Puerto Ricans are dancing again tonight. Good for them, 3.4. Oh, that's Dominican Republic. This might be Puerto Rico. This next one over here. There we go. Yeah, the Puerto Ricans are dancing. <laughs> Good for them. All right, folks. Space weather. X-class solar flare and CME. Yesterday, giant sunspot AR3615 uh, produced an X1-class solar flare. So she's still popping off. She's kind of turning out of view, but she's still flaring. There it is. This thing's got bigger. It's just started growing again. That's a 30, 3615. Look at that. That thing's getting huge. Let's hope she shrinks going around the far side of the sun before it comes back around. Sometimes they do that. Let's just hope it does. That's the last thing we need is to have major solar flares. The aurora don't look too intense right now. It's kind of back down a little bit, but that CME may kick it back up. And the world asteroids. Nothing's coming between the Earth and the moon that we know of. But we always find things coming, whizzing by us, you know, and discovering them right after they whiz by us. This little 11 uh, meter wide one, though, is going to be like almost about one and a half times lunar distance, 1.6. That's the closest one that we see coming up. Anyway, guys. Uh, Nate said, you know, all preppers turn into farmers over at Canadian Prepper. What's your time arrival to the zone? Diamond had a clip on the path and time of each place along the path. Yeah, they're, they're there on that uh, chart. You can actually get the exact times. Uh, that's one thing you can do. Um, I, you know, given that you, there's going to be such a crowd, it might make sense just to camp out the night before somewhere in the area. And not even leave the next day because the traffic is going to be horrible. Anyway, Nate from Canadian Preppers telling us eventually all preppers, all smart preppers become farmers. And what, after everything I've been covering about food preparation, you better, it's springtime, guys. If you've not got your seeds, get them. You can get heirloom seeds, non-GMO, right here from uh, True Leaf Market and also from Eden Brothers. There'll be links for that. And we won't go through this in detail right now because I'm going to stop and chat with you guys a minute. But there's the weather in the United States. We'll go around the world in a minute like we usually do. I'm going to stop and share for a little bit. Halo. How's everybody doing? All righty, folks. Yeah, it goes directly over the New Madrid Fault. That is true. And in fact, that's the cross point from the one in 2017 and this one. Now, this one's wider and lasts longer. Maybe that's why they're more concerned about this one than the one from 20, uh, 
17. Actually, right here in North Alabama, we're in a zone that would be 90%, all this distance away. That's how wide this one is. Most of the country is going to get a little bit of an eclipse, but you'll not see the big corona around the sun unless you're right there where the moon totally blocks that. you got to be in the path of totality to see that. Yeah, I saw that briefly in uh, Sparta, Tennessee in 2017. I took my granddaughter and my daughter there, my, my oldest granddaughter and my youngest daughter, and we watched it together. So it got dark for a little bit. And I was kind of surprised how dark it got, but it was kind of anticlimactic. I mean, it's okay, that's interesting. You know, <laughs> this one might be better, especially if the sun's flaring up or doing something crazy. Uh, who knows what we might see? Uh, let me go through the chat room and see what folks are saying in here. All right, it starts out Captain Trips, the Canadian girl says, Go Russia. Hi, uh, folks in chat says new days. Two is Arnold's checking number. Black sheep, how you doing? Uh, S Swervin, Swervin, Swervin K9. It's early out west. Dang, Greg. Yeah, well, it's even earlier here. <laughs> early, late. How I look at it. It's late for the whole night. And it's early in the morning. We're in the wee hours here. Takes me some time to put all this together. So I just heard 13 billion doses. Hmm. Yeah, I got to be careful. I can't repeat that or I'll be in big, big trouble on this platform. Yeah, they probably can swerve in K9. The Sasquatch Moon says it's time. I believe they think they can. Yeah, that's if they're going to make the go for it, then they obviously would think they can do it. Things are getting spicy, uh, Terry Snyder. I agree with that. A little too spicy. I like spicy food, but not pork. Uh, Zen Jammin. Little Kim looks like he might have an extra chromosome. <laughs> Is it, does his knuckle start to drag in the ground? I don't know. Jacob Dennis. Uh, how do you say that? Dennis, Dennis Joel. I don't know how you say that. It says, you actually got a pop-up notification. Yeah, that's kind of rare, ain't it? Oh, yeah, the 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 the, the uh, Ukrainians have been paying havoc on the, the Black Sea fleet with their drones. Uh, that just shows that warfare is moving in a robotic stage, and these big military assets are like sitting ducks. For the most part now the US Navy does have a lot of defense systems, but if you got enough stuff coming in, you could saturate that. You could overpower it. That's what China wants to do. That may be what the Houthis are testing and practicing out uh informationally wise for the uh Iranians. Blow fell from Ian Fleming. Uh 007 on the White Cat. Was that his name Blofeld? <laughs> Yeah, I always had some funny names in the Bond movies. Those old Bond movies were funny. You know, now, now they don't want to do a lot of the stuff they used to do in those because they want to be more politically correct. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, when's the last Bond movie come out? With all this stuff going on, it used to be the Cold War was a big topic for the Bond movies. Uh, and they kind of got away from that when the wall fell. There's a lot of material now, but they're, they're, can they cover it in the politically correct whatever? I don't know. So what's uh, they have a new bond now? I don't know. Norway is in the house. Hey Norway, good to see ya. I just came over from another channel. Has anybody heard about two missiles flying over into Mos Moldova? Oh Moldova, one hit and one turned back to Russia. Well, so that's a whole nother front. It could open up because. Uh, you know, at one time, Lukashenko had said that would be next, and there's been a whole lot of activity vis-a-vis -vis Moldova. Yikes, guys. There's just all kind of ways this thing could head south in a hurry. And for, uh, from the United States' perspective, the fact that we are allied with all these countries over there through NATO with that Article 5 clause could get us pulled into it. You know, we've talked in here about should we even be in NATO? And the votes from you guys have generally run no. So, uh, 
you you have in the chat room voted that we should pull out in the past. So I, uh, you know, your part will be able to take care of its own. Sam Turner says, I'm again, for some reason, unable to send a super chat. Oh, hang on, Sam. For some reason, you're not smurfed. Let's fix that. Bang. Let's see. Why is that? I thought you were smurfed here. Bang. That ought to help Sam Turner. You have now been smurfed once again. Well, why am I with that? Yeah, maybe you're just smurfed on green grass. But I thought you were smurfed over here, too. All right, Sam Turner, you are smurfed. Never trust what Poot says. Yeah, I don't trust what any of them say. Jason says they're pushing Putin in to incinerate Kiev. Well, he might. He might. Well, the estimates, just a lot of intelligence folks are now saying they think that Russia could have Kiev by this summer. You know what I said? I said that when Ukraine claimed to broke through the line, found that big defensive line the Russians put out, when they finally said he broke through it but didn't go in behind it to take advantage of it, I said, it's over. It's over. And that was before we withheld stuff from Ukraine. That was before the Congress was dragging their feet on voting money over there. I don't know. You know what I tell you, uh, what I've said for a long time here is time is on the side of Russia because Russia has, you know, if it's a war of attrition, which most wars are, that's how the United, every time the United States won a war, they won it as a war of attrition, which means we outproduced and had more manpower than the sides that we were taking on. So how are we supposed to win against China, which is the world's factory? That's going to be tough, guys. Serbia and Kosovo, nothing but problems. Man, Jason, you were right on that. They, they've been problems. That area, the Balkans area, has been problems since WW1. Uh, Sasquatch Moon, post a call, 9-11, for predators, not in phone range. Yeah, dumb rules. Yeah, you call 911, what they're going to do? You got some mountain lion chewing on your horse. You know, how long is it going to take them to get out there? Your horse is gone before they'll get there. Black sheep, pink cow for strawberry milk. <laughs> All right. Pagan prepper, uh, they make sure that other animals cannot take over. Hmm. Ren's cousin from New York City came here to visit when he was 17, did not know where milk came from, and he was sick from not knowing the realization of this. How <laughs> oh, he found out, he made him say, oh, it didn't come out of a jug in a grocery store. It comes from where? <laughs> I was going to say this whole thing in Oregon, you know, they're favoring feedlots where the cattle stands uttered, almost utters deep in, in cow manure. And, you know, they're trying to play, apply the same rules to the farmers that let their cows run free and the pastures like a cow ought to be able to. And you're know, by these feedlots, these Think they smell the high heaven. It's like, oh, my milk's coming from that stinky place. Ew. And you know those cows aren't happy. What's one of the commercials say? Happy cows give uh, good milk. I would think there might be something to that. Now we do need an ecosystem, but you know, we got to be careful how we apply it. Oh, Samuel Turner must have found the uses for his wrench. Oh, that's New Days. Good luck with the upcoming interview. Salute, New Days. Thank you. Oh, it's still not working for you. Wow. Well, Sam and Turner, you can always go to um, go to my website, Green Gregs. Somebody post a link uh, to that site. If you go to Green Gregs, there's a donate button. If you go to the page that... Uh, if you go to the page where it used to be my buy worms page, if you, you'll find a donate button when you get on the landing page, just hit the donate button and go to that page, which is buy worms. All the worm buying buttons have been disabled, but the donate button still works. You can go through there. I'll check my uh, uh, email here in a little bit to see if uh, anything's coming through there. So we'll see what's going on there. All right, let me scroll back up and check out some of these other messages. We 
for you. Chat one is not loading. That was my problem of the day. Chat one that didn't load for me. In fact, I couldn't even tell if I was live or not. I was like, really? What's going on here? You know, I actually ended one video probably prematurely because when the messages I sent, it looked like it was people were in the room. Uh, but I actually deleted that one because it was kind of a botched start. And that's not what, you know, the morning coffee dreams, they don't want to see that. Mm. Now, if somebody does go to my website and send a donation that way, I will get an email for that. I've got notifications turned off on my phone, so they're going to bing, 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 bing. But I can check that from time to time. Michelle Young likes to send donations that way, and I've got a few others. So, <laughs> sure whether I'm here, but my chat window. So he's having problems with the chat window. Hmm. Uh, nothing yet, but I'll keep an eye on that. So we'll know when that comes through, if anybody that works out for anybody. And again, it could just be the platform, the way it likes to pick on me. I don't know what's going on with that. Unknown Vector. How you doing, Unknown Vector? Halo to you. Yeah, but the presidents can't do amnesty unilaterally. It requires funds from Congress, just like Obama couldn't close Gitmo. Good. Well, we, fortunately, in the House, we got some people that don't go along with everything President Taterhead wants. Oh, yeah, and they're still, they are pushing the articles of impeachment for the head of the Department of Homeland Insecurity, Marocas, to the Senate. The Senate probably won't do nothing about it. You know, we know how they're with that about that. Hey, Meg Rising, how you doing? Good to see you in the house, Meg Rising. There, uh, there will be mega cities like those in sci-fi movies like Judge Dredge. I won't be there. <laughs> oh, yeah, the 15-minute cities. Remember those? They want everybody living in the city. Everybody. Oh, yeah, they want you all there. So that's but it may be part of the agenda because you know homesteaders and farmers you know they want to pick on them real hard because homesteaders and farmers like independence. What I showed you guys on the Green Grigs, I was that article from uh, what's it called? Something Matters that's Soros funded Media Matters uh, website where they were saying all oh, these homesteaders are all just right wing blah 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 you know, throwing a lot of dispersion at folks that just want to make a living and stand on their own two feet and be independent. You know, good grief, guys. Your laptop's 30 seconds behind. Oh, we got another super chat. Rodney Middleton. Sorry I'm late. It's cooking dinner. <laughs> Salute to Rodney. Thank you, Rodney. He is the master knife smith, guys. Rodney Middleton. That guy makes some great knives. I'm going to tell you. I'll have to look at some of them here in a minute. Let me see what else is in the chat here. Well, Kansas City totality. Um, uh, we'll go back to that map a little bit. Maybe one corner might. I, I don't think so. You might catch it in the southeast corner. It's mainly going through just. It, now I don't think so because it's going through southeast Oklahoma and then going up through Arkansas. So I don't think you're going to see totality directly in Kansas, but you'll see. You'll get better ninety percent. Ring Gregs, watch your time arrival in the zone. Oh, yeah, okay, I saw that earlier. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be there or not. You know, it's going to be, there's going to be such a crowd. Even the one where I went, I chose when I saw the uh, last eclipse to go to a very rural town, Sparta, Tennessee. And I went up through most of the back roads because I was trying to avoid the traffic, trying to avoid, yeah, they're in the cities where yeah, it was in the path. People were backed up for hours. And even me going to Sparta, it, it was a traffic jam getting out. Probably took us over maybe a couple of hours to leave just because it was a traffic jam there for that one. They say this one's going to have even more people. And that's why they're giving out all these warnings, uh, like telling people in the path to get your food and water and everything ahead of time because all these other crowds are going to go in, descend on the stores and clear the shelves out. So just be ready. If you're going to it, carry food and water because the shelves may indeed be cleaned out and a gas who knows even the gas stations might run out of fuel so you might even want to carry a couple of gas cans with you or go early stay late 
You know, why fight the crowds? They're claiming that uh, accidents, fatal accidents in 2017 were up 17% right after, right before and right after the eclipse. It was very little during the eclipse because everybody was standing there going, oh, oh, ah. But afterwards, just because there was so much traffic that it really upped the uh, accident count. So if you're in these areas and you have to drive around at those times, be very careful because a lot of people are going to be fighting the traffic. They're going to be frustrated and that ain't going to be pretty. Does something cross paths, but Kumata by Eagle Pass, or I'm remembering wrong. I don't know what Kumata is, straight kitten. Stern's going to be doing a test on the 8th. Oh, yeah. Devil's Comet, which has got a scientific name. I don't remember it offhand. Uh, it's, it's in the day sky at that point in time. And because it's in the sky, northern hemisphere in the daytime, the sun's going to wash it out and you can't see it. But during the eclipse, they say you should be able to see Devil's Comet. Isn't that weird? So you're going to get an eclipse and a comet. Who knows what else, astronomically speaking at that point in time. Let's hope the sun don't join the party by throwing out some crazy flares. Yeah, I watched a total eclipse in Virginia Beach in 1968. Wow. Yeah, it's starting to worry me either, to be honest. It really don't. I got no concern over CERN. It's not as, there's a lot of other things that's more powerful than CERN and Mama Nature. Oh, they're all paid actors in the theater. Mm. Yeah, he's behind the curtain. Okay, due date says, Samuel, reboot your cell or computer, and then you'd be good to send super chats. Yeah, I think she's had a problem before. She said she, when she'd reboot, she was, she'd be able to send them after that. So maybe that's what you need to do, is reboot your computer, reboot your phone. If that don't work, there's always these, uh, you always go to my website. At the bottom of the chat. Yeah, I believe I am. Finally. Whoops. 50 million cities like Logan's Run. Yeah. Yeah, like Logan's Run or or what was, there's another one that was really strange. It was uh oh yeah, what was the one that was that supposed to occur in 2022? Uh they had the little wafers they ate. Solent green. Solent green. Now that was spooky. Carlton Heston, Salient Green. Yeah, they had an agenda for the people. Then there was a, a TV series about the Sandman. Remember that from the 70s? Uh, it was Obama actually to private military contractors. Whoa. There's Christy in the house. Haven't seen her in here in a while. Christy Easley. Traveler says, I'm staying away from crowds on the 8th. I don't blame you. If you want to see the comet, you probably need to be under totality, most likely. Oh, it supports a lot of channels. Okay, Rodney, that's good to know. I knew a guy who gave away dead batteries. <laughs> They were free of charge. <laughs> oh, Lord. Where's Christy? I don't see Christy. I think I missed it. I don't see her in here. Well, I'm not seeing her comment. Somebody delete her? She's been a long time follower of the channel. Now, she's liberal, but she's been a long time follower of the channel. Uh, 
I know I'm very, not your favorite. I hear you. But they're a solid number two. Oh, hey, Cha Cha. Cha Cha's in the house. Yay. Good to see you. As uh, Rodney Middleton says. Hey, man. Cha Cha. How you doing, Cha Cha? Been a while. Anyway, guys, so. Um, yeah, guys, in case y'all don't know, uh, I'll do a little show. I'll show you some of the stuff Rodney sent me. She sent me three beautiful knives. If you haven't ever seen them, I've shown them before. I pull these are. I got them all right here at my fingertips. And I think I'm going to figure out some program for giving two of these away to you guys, but I got to figure out how to. What's well, a good equitable way to do that and how to I, I gotta have addresses to do that too. This is one of them. Look at this. Handmade. That thick blade. The workmanship and are sharp, very sharp. This is a big one right here. How thick that is. I could, I could shave my whiskers off with it. I might could cut my hair with it. <laughs> Very sharp. And here's the first one he sent me. He had a nice leather pouch. Very, very high quality workmanship. Extreme high quality. That's off to Rodney. What a nice smith he is. Just uh, excellent that category. Beautiful knives. They are. That's Rodney's workmanship, guys. He he hand makes those. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that cute? awesome? Yes, sir. That is nothing short of awesome. So I want to thank Rodney for that. That one is spring steel, five millimeter thick. Wow, okay. John Edwards, how you doing? Sasquatchman, everybody has had troubles with YouTube today. Uh, that may be the problem that uh, Sam Turner is having. But, you know, Sam can reboot his computer according to New Days and, and be able to do the super chats after that. There's something in the cache, I guess, that gets caught up she's mentioned that before i've heard her talk about that wow guys so in my department you know i'm that the fiasco with my van has depleted my treasury and i've been living off your super chats mostly <laughs> believe it or not which is kind of it's, it helps a lot but it's you know it's, they don't cover my bills so i've actually applied for unemployment but you in Alabama, you've got to apply for jobs for three weeks before you can even start drawing. And of course, the first you know companies I applied to did what I was expecting. They said, "Well, you don't have a current security clearance, so we really can't use you." I was getting a lot of that. But Blue Origin come out and says, "Hey, you got a security clearance?" I said, "No." And they said, "Well, that's a good thing because most people with security clearances don't want to lose them, and we're commercial, so we don't use security clearances. So for them, not having a security clearance." It's kind of like an asset because uh, people with security clearances don't want to take a job that don't maintain it because they lose it. And then they have problems getting jobs later, like I'm looking at. Uh, but uh, it may be a positive for them. So uh, I had a initial screening interview, and I just went online. They sent me an email where I can pick times to schedule another interview. So sometime next week, I'll have a second interview. And their process, if I get through that, is to make a four-hour presentation or uh, make an interview uh, or do a presentation. I'll spend four hours interviewing with various and sundry folks over in Blue Origin. Blue Origin, of course, is a company created by Jeff Bezos, and uh, they got this big rocket engine called the BE-4, which is a, uh, a stage combustion or full cycle combustion cycle, which means it burns all the it, it, they have a pre burner to run the turbines, which puts enough pressure into the combustion chamber of a liquid fuel engine. Blacksmith is such art, it is, but it's uh, 
what it does is, uh, yeah, they pre-burn the fuel, not the locks, because locks is very explosive. And they put it through back in the combustion chain. Open so cycle system vents that stuff over. But a closed cycle system, a little more challenging to develop, but it's far more efficient. And so it's a methane locks hydrogen. It's a methane locks engine, kind of like uh, the Raptors and the previous Merlin engines that uh, SpaceX uh, developed, and which actually was a spinoff of a local developed engine called the Fast Track that Marshall Space Flight Center did for what that was the, the origin of the Merlin. The Raptor, I guess, was the next phase of that. Uh, these the Raptor is about like three hundred thirty thousand, I think, pounds thrust, whereas the BE four is five hundred fifty thousand pounds of thrust, which means you need at least less engines to get the same overall thrust for a booster. And you know, from a safety and reliability standpoint, reliability is inversely proportional to parts count, so that shouldn't make it more reliable. But you know. Uh, Starship's done a whole lot of testing to try to get the reliability of it. 33 engines on a booster, holy smoke. Uh, the Ruskies couldn't do it. You know, they tried their N1 booster. I think they had 20 or something. That thing, just a, the uh, sonic effects from the different engines, every one of those uh, N1s blew up. So let's hope that don't happen with the next few Starships. I hope they have good luck with them. But uh, this uh, BE4 engine is a very interesting engine. Now, I'll be, that's what I'd be working on. I'd be in a group doing system safety on the BE4 if they accept me. And that's a big if. Like I said, they like younger people typically. Uh, we'll, ha we'll see where that goes. Um, unfortunately, it tied me to Huntsville for a while. So, might make it harder for me to get out to Arizona, especially I don't know how much vacation time I'd get with them. I forgive me some leeway to do a little bit of remote work, but they they really want people working in house. We still have Sam Turner was hadn't sent a comment from him in a little bit. So uh and Michelle Young hasn't joined us tonight. She missed us uh, one of our other sessions. I guess she probably saw on some logs and she is good for her. She tends to send a, a donation, even though if she misses a session, she'll tend to send something in through the uh website I mentioned which he likes to post here in New Days. Maybe you can post my website in here for those that would be inclined to do that instead of do the Super Chat route through YouTube. So, uh, or one of you mods. Honestly, don't you make my... Arnold, do you make knives? I've got a blacksmith set up that uh, I've got a forge. i got blowers. I tend to take that stuff out to uh, Arizona and maybe set it up out there. Hey, Tim, how you doing? So that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, I've also this afternoon responded to some stuff from Lockheed Martin, but uh, that's missile defense. And I started my engineering career out with military stuff and missile defense. I actually co opted in the Ares Project Office, which uh, Lockheed Martin was a prime on the project we were working on back then. It was called Ares Exo Atmospheric Reentry Interceptor Subsystem. That's where I got that poster was from the Ares Project Office. And a guy who was over all that and was just part of the strategic initiative uh, uh, office, SDIO, the person who was in charge of that was Ambassador Hank Cooper. He was a, a Pentagon department level, department of level, uh, defense guy in charge of the entire Ronnie Reagan Star Wars program. As, not, as officially known as SDIO. He was in charge of that. And I've had him on this channel talking about how to get the grid hardened and doing it through local activities. So I've had Ambassador Cooper on this channel. <laughs> the man who was in charge of all of that. And maybe I'll get him back. His wife passed away about a year ago and he had been kind of out at it. So maybe I'll get him back on here. And I just saw that... Uh, my good friend uh, David Pine was on once again on uh, Canadian Prepper. So maybe I need to get David Pine to do some interviews again. I've just been kind of, uh, I've had a couple other people I talked about interviewing and we just hadn't synced it up, including uh, Texas State uh, Senator Paul. Uh, I may get him on here. We talked about that. I talked with him and he said he'd be willing to come on here and talk. Uh, and let's see who else might I get on here. Uh, there's some other good characters we might bring in the house here for some interviews. Probably on the Green Greg's channel. Anyway, so because that's talking more power grid defense. Cannot and cannot what? Alaska Soul. What's up, Shaggy? All right. Good to see you here. 
CDD. If you want chance of getting job, you have to shut down your YouTube channel and cut your hair and shave. <laughs> oh yeah, that I think it probably hurt me in my last was my last full time lead. Uh, she was posting stuff that suggested she was on the other side of the spectrum. <laughs> she was all about uh, global warming. I'm about global warming. <laughs> so, so I don't know, guys. Maybe that, that might have got me. But, yeah, I don't know how much change I can do. But, you know, I'm kind of committed to heading out to Arizona. But I got to sell this place if I do it. Problem is I'm run out of money. So I've got to figure out some way to bridge the gaps. <laughs> so I'm, I am, uh, vapors are getting thin. That fiasco with a van, the, the shyster shop in Planet Houston really messed me up. Greg, I was explaining that only mods can link sites. That's true. That is true. Only mods can put links in the chat room. That's a fact. So, um, so Greg, what do you want us mods to do? Oh, post a link to my website where I've been selling worms, the Green Greg's website. So I just got the donate button for anybody that wants to do that. Um, so I'm going to post that link for anybody that wants to go there. Like uh, Samuel was having trouble, and you days uh, suggest him to, to reboot his computer, and I hadn't seen him back since. So he might that might have knocked him out. <laughs> I don't know. Are you with us, Samuel? Are you still here? Who knows? He's on the East Coast. He might be sawing some logs by now. <laughs> he has got to help him. Uh, Samuel's a great guy. He's done a lot of help for us. I'm surprised he wasn't smurfed here. There you go, Rodney. That's for the Defy the Grid. That's the link for that. That works. Yeah, and always... Use the discount code GreenGregs if you go there. That's the only way I get any help, and it helps you too. The same amount you get to save one percent. And their margin's pretty thin. That's why they they got such low prices there. The margin's thin. There's a while I wasn't promoting because the margin was so thin. I wasn't talking about it. I kept seeing I was getting traffic there a lot more than anything else. So that's why I started promoting it again because people were really going there. So I started talking about it and promoting it. There's a lot of people go for that. I heard that. I heard that part of New York was having power outages. Oh, Bezos was a, was a smart the way he played SpaceX. You get more time for Blue Origin. Yeah, a little underhanded. <laughs> I better watch what I say there. Uh, but you know, he's uh, he tends to be on the left side of the spectrum because he owns in Washington Post. But uh, his philosophy on space colonization is a lot better in my humble opinion than Elon Musk. Uh that he because he goes the O'Neillian rotating spheres where you still got one gravity inside. Uh and I think that's a far superior way to go. We don't even know yet if we could survive on Mars. So uh his visions for space, my humble opinion is better uh, when it comes to Bezos. So uh it would be exciting to get a chance to work on that big engine. <laughs> Anyway, that would be something that's probably going to make a big difference in the future. You need to tell me something. What do you need to tell me there, Alaska Soul? Anyway, is there something you can't tell me here? Got to go. Have a good night. Hey, New Days, thanks for joining us. Thank you for the super chat, New Days. Appreciate that. We're going to go here in a little bit. Oh, yeah, we got to go to the weather. We've been on 83 minutes. It is 4 o'clock here. Yeah, I got to get it in the morning, too. I got to make a junkyard run. I never get notified when Greg is on. I usually don't sit until after it's over. Well, I'm glad you made it in. Sam Turner, there you are. A more kempt appearance would probably help you gain employment. True. When I do interviews, I typically put my hair in a ponytail. So it's not all over like this. That's one thing I do. Bezos had different philosophy of space. I hope they both make it. To be on. Yeah, me too. Hope that works. Amen. Hope hope they both have successful ventures on the space side. Greg, please read this. The key bridge can still be saved. The traffic can still get across. 
and so can the cargo ships. How would they do that with all that metal in the water? It takes a while to build a, put up a bridge. It's down. It's in the drink. How do you save that, Alaska Soul? Oh, straight in. I just don't know how to do that. I need some guidance in that department. <laughs> yeah. That's a big question about, you know, gee, if I cut my hair, it's going to take it years to grow back. <laughs> it may not come back strawberry blonde. It might come back looking more like my beard. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have to think about it. But um, so far, it's been by telephone. That four-hour presentation, though, uh, that won't be by phone. That'll be a couple weeks from now. I got a couple weeks to think about it. I got to go and dish up dinner, guys. All right. Well, thank you, Ronnie. Salute to you, Ronnie. Much appreciation for you. Yeah, I've had short hair many times in the past. In fact, I didn't grow this out until I start, really started worming. I had a girlfriend back in 2017, 2018. She was like 20 years younger than me, and she insisted I grow my hair and my beard. And then I did the worm videos. People said, Greg, you're branded. Don't change. If you change, you're going to mess it up. Of course, the worm farm really isn't my main thing anymore. But, you know, I've told you guys a lot of times, y'all don't want to see me cut it. I don't know. They can, of course... Uh, this don't make me much. You know, I can make a lot more money as a Walmart greeter than I could as a YouTuber. Because <laughs> I don't get that many views from my channel size. Just copy and paste links, Arnold Smith. Okay, there you go. Sam Turner says, and one of the mods going to post the one button link. I asked them to, but they hadn't done it yet. Let's see if I can find the chat room here on this computer. Give me a second. It's, all, it's just like that. It's just my channel name and .com. That should go straight to it. Let me do a me click on it and see what that does. No, that, you got to put that in your browser, I guess. Maybe hit shift. Go there. Hmm. It's not going there. Let me uh, go to the website and put it in. Give me a second. In fact, I will go to the page that says it got the button. Right, give me a few minutes, guys. It's going to take a minute. I haven't taken off the, the links for buying worms. They're still there. You have to scroll down past them. The donate button is underneath those. You just got to scroll down a little bit and find them. Let's see here. Okay, give me a minute, guys. There you go, Cha Cha. Oh, that's my YouTube channel. Let's see here. Okay, I'll ask. So give me a minute. Give me a minute. Trying to get this out here because nobody else posted it. There you go. That's the link. You may have to copy it into your browser. I don't know if it'll click since it's got the channel name in it. Uh, let's see here. So what is uh, Alaska Soul saying? Read my last message. They can use pontoon bridges. As they are in Ukraine, these bridges carry heavier cargo than semi trucks, and they're made for boat traffic. Yeah, for some reason they haven't ever done that for commercial traffic. Uh, there may be some regulation on it. I don't know. I've never seen them do that for commercial traffic for military. Yeah. I know, Victor. I've heard the best rocket scientists have long hair and beards like anti gravity wizards. <laughs> we talked about anti gravity a little bit, especially on green, uh, on uh, galactic Gregs. Greg, you should make a mod out of stray kitten.
Where's she at? I gotta find her to do that. There it is. Oh, I come and get a mod button there. Wait a minute, what's going on here? <sighs> All right, I got an issue here going on. I come in, it's not giving me the option right now. Let me make do it on this computer because that's not this is not my normal browser. Got money. I don't have anything to do with money. Some channels might require you to pay money. I don't. All right, Stray Kitten. You've been smurfed. I couldn't do it on this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Different browser. Ace Lee, how you doing? Well, Ace, you've been a pretty good guy for a long time. Let's see. Usually, though, if somebody asks for to be a mod, that means you don't make them a mod. That's the standard thing that most channels go by. Anybody asks to be a mod, don't get to be a mod. <laughs> I'll make an exception for uh, Ace Lee, though. Longtime friend of our channels here. Ace, you've been smurfed. Bring Greg and make a. Something copy and paste links for Arnold. Hmm. It's kind of hard for me to go in here and do the link stuff. If New Days was done, I should have put that out. How to copy and paste links. Oh, how to. That's what you're saying. That heart was hiding. That heart always hides the bottom message. Fairly good. Son of Sam, David Berkowitz. What about that? Only one Smurfette. <laughs> Stray Kitten, does that make you a Smurfette? Yeah, you're a Smurfette. <laughs> ah, lordy, lordy. So, let me go to my, straight into my PayPal site. That donate button does work through PayPal. Um, she also sent a donation on the 27th. David Berkowitz. Oh, oh, you got the name of David Berkowitz. That's where the son of Sam's coming in. Uh oh, <laughs> I got David Berkowitz in the house. Are you the son of Sam David Berkowitz? The conclusion of, of what? Leave us hanging there. Don't cut your hair until you check with CEO. They might not care as long as you keep it pulled back. Yeah, that's, that's what I said. Probably for the interview, I'd probably just put a ponytail. You know, that looks a lot more formal. Looks well, a lot more. If you've seen my video I did on uh, the Chinese balloon threat, I had a ponytail that I actually wore a suit. That was the first video I wore a suit for here on this channel. Now, if you go to the old space, National Space Society conferences, and see, if you see any videos of me from those, I've always got a suit on. And I had short hair then. Are beehives viable in Arizona? Yes, there are honey growers in Arizona, but all the bees in Arizona are Africanized which means they're dangerous, far more than any bees around here. They're all Africanized bees. And, you know, when I'm in my place, there's honeybees buzzing around me all the time. But, you know, an individual, as long as you're not near the hive, they're not going to bother you unless you do something stupid like swat at them. If you swat at one and it kills it, then they're all liable to attack you. But, you know, they won't bother you just as an individual bee buzzing around. Just they buzz around you. They're not there to hurt you. They're just checking things out. They don't don't go crazy and start swatting at them. You'd be in trouble. And there's no point in it. They're not, as an individual bee, just buzzing around. They're not going to hurt you. But now if you get near their hive, hmm, you're in trouble. Problem is, you don't know where their hives are. That's the scary thing about it. Now, I'm a little bit more worried about the honeybees than I am 
the African ice bees than them rattlesnakes. I don't worry about rattlesnakes. I worry about getting close to one of them hives. I got to spend some time just kind of checking things out to try to see where they're buzzing in and out of if I can. But you can always walk up on one accidentally, especially when I'm down in the bottom area of my property where the brush there is very thick. I say, I want to make good pasture land. If I get a mower down there, mow all that stuff out and plant grass, I could have a heck of a hay field. All right, I'm trying to find a how-to video. Oh, <laughs> hmm. I don't know where the how-to videos in that are. So maybe uh, maybe we can talk one of the other mods into putting some instructions out, or maybe uh, when we get uh, New Days back in the house. She seems to have a lot of knowledge in that area, more than I've got. All right, folks, let's do, let's bring up the weather. Getting late. I don't know if I want to go into this much. It's really getting late, and I got to get up early, so I don't want to go too deep into this. Jesse, join us. Let's see. Let me hit the share button. Sometimes I forget that. Got to find the right screen. Bada bing, bada bang. Here we go. Share one more time. Bada. Oh yeah. By the way, guys, this is the home page if you ever go to my website directly to the home page a lot of videos posted there you can go to the buy worms button here this used to say buy worms but i changed it to say donate Just scroll down hit that button and you make a donation directly right there I filled out everything on the site, but it wouldn't work for you. Well, that's weird. Well, I don't know what to say. Uh, you can enter your credit cards there, different things. I don't know, Samuel. So you got here and it didn't work. That button hadn't been part. Yeah, I got a donation from... Uh, See, probably the thing to do is to click this bottom button, donate with debit or credit card. So you can go down here and click that. That would work. Uh, I got a donation just a couple of days ago from uh, Michelle Young. She'll probably throw one in in the morning. Hey, you got to click this button down here. Unless you got a PayPal account. If you've already got a PayPal account, you can click here. But you don't have to have a PayPal account. You, gotta, you don't have to have a PayPal account at all. You can click there. Anyway, let's look at the weather again. Uh, wow, look here. 30s, 320s up here. Great Falls is 28. A lot of 30s across the country. In the United States. Juarez, El Paso is at 62. Phoenix is 64. Lost Wages is 64. And Lost Angels is 53. Let's see here. Denver is 32. We're not going to go too deep in here today. We're just going to do a quick over. I'm not going to go in and out everywhere. Anchorage is at 32. Homer's at 32. Fairbanks is 25. You want to check out Delta Junction. I'm going to come up. Delta Junction is 30. I'm warmer than Fairbanks again. That's weird. That's kind of an exception. What dead horse is. Yikes, skip forward too far. Go back, go back, go back. Dead horse is 14 and barrows 10. Springtime in Alaska, folks. It's warming up. <laughs> we got a minus four over here in Siberia. Minus six up here, minus six over there, minus six there. Okay, minus 11 up here, minus 15. All right, springtime in Siberia. Minus 15 is the coldest I've seen so far. Let's go down under. Go to Rodney Land. Whoa. Got to let it catch up to us. We're out in the ocean. Where are we at? I have to back off a little bit. I'll scroll too far. Still out in the ocean. 
There we are. We out in the Pacific. We got lost at sea. <laughs> we'll go to Norway here in a minute. We do have Norway in the house. Melbourne is 66. Hobart, Tasmania is 57. Sydney 70. Canberra 68. Perth 73. Well, you got 70s in lower Queensland. We well, here 82 in the middle. And Weepa is 80, which is pretty typical for Epa. The other one's 84. Alice Springs, we're out in the desert. They do a lot of, they do some of these altitude blends there and some rocket stuff. They got a satellite tracking system, a lot of stuff in Alice Springs, 77. Or Borton, 75. But Tennant Creek is 82. Nothing too crazy temperature wise. It's fall down there, down under. Plymouth, New Zealand is 48. Christchurch is 48. Ooh. Nice cool temperatures. For daytime, New Zealand tends to run a little cooler. Oops, I'm just going forward again. And then Jordan, 73. Moscow's 39. Bella Looking Chico Land, but Minsk. Belarus is 53. Kiev is 48. Guys, the Zawalki Gap is right here. That is the Zawalki Gap that we were talking about right here. It's 50 in Valininus. Warsaw is 55. Norway. Hey, Cha Cha. Salute to you, Cha Cha. Thank you very much. All right, Stravinger, hope I'm saying it close to right, 46, Oslo is 41, Stockholm, Sweden is 44, 43 up here, <laughs> 20 is up here, 21, 26. Springtime in Norway, we get a few people from England in here sometimes. Got Shield Maiden, I don't see her yet. London's 48. Hall's 48. 48 over here. Dublin, Ireland's 46. Dingle's 46. Glasgow, Scotland's 43. And Inverness is 41. There we go. Probably enough for tonight. We'll let the weather run, see what these clouds and snow does. Colorado get a lot of snow up in the Sierra Nevada and mountains of California. Wow, they're going to have a heck of a breakup season. When all that thaws out, they're going to have floods in California. They got Wyoming, Salt Lake City, Nevada getting snow on Saturday. Nevada getting a lot of snow Saturday. Utah getting snow all over. Miss Granny, Wyoming's getting snow. Miss Granny, Southern U uh, Montana. That's going up in South Dakota, big time South Dakota, New Mexico on Monday. I right, got some storms forming Monday in the middle of the country there. Making you dizzy. What's making you dizzy? Oh, yeah, the storm's heading my way Tuesday. All right, through the East Coast Wednesday. Snow from Michigan, Indiana. Wednesday, you're going to be Ohio, West Virginia, Smoky Mountains, getting snow on Thursday. A lot of snow in the Smoky Mountains Thursday. Look at that on the eastern side. Northeast getting a lot of snow Thursday. Look at that. West Coast getting snow Thursday. Northwest, all over the Northwest Rockies, Salt Lake City, Friday, all of Utah, Bitterroot Mountains, Western Montana. On Saturday, following Saturday the 6th. This is going through Sunday 7th, so we're not going to see the eclipse day just yet. New Days is back. Made it back. Joey's are working during live. Yeah, she's working. Greg, you could fire up your Green Greg site long enough to help us donate. Uh, I'll go back to it. There it is. You click that button. 
Uh, New Days, can you throw the link in for this? Samuel got here and he couldn't, for some reason it wasn't working for him. Somebody throw this link in again. New Days, can you throw in the link for this page? This is the Bioworms page at Green Griggs where the donate button's at. That's right there. Click on that. I have cracked phone over a fourth of the screen is black. Oh, no. Thank you, New Days. There you go. So, oh, you got to tell it you're not a robot. Uh-oh. Sometimes PayPal does that. Everything with stairs in. Oh, Lordy. One of those. Buses. Now you can come in here. If you're a member of PayPal, you can click this button. Or otherwise, you click that one. Mount, oh, you got to fill out the amount first, what you want to give. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not going to go all the way through. You just go ahead and you fill out your, your information like you normally do and hit donate. So go back. So the new day showed the uh, landing page. That's the front page. That's this one. You use the link that New Day showed you. You come here. When you come here, just click the donate button. That takes you where I was at. Takes you here. Nice bowl of worms. Looks like skitty. Makes you hungry to see it. <laughs> if you support the things I do, feel free to donate. Bam. Yeah, that's where we're at. I find rebuking your system will take care of being able to send super chats. Yeah, that's what New Days is saying, uh, Samuel. Sometimes you, it, I guess the cache memory is an issue. So if you hit the donate, uh, reboot your system, it works. We're about to call it a night in here. It's already 4.30 in the morning. It takes me at least an hour to get to bed. I'm going to post... Uh, a thumbnail picture and you know show notes and stuff like that and then just got things to do to head toward the bed i have a spare samsung phone if you want uh okay i don't have everybody's address here though if somebody wants something like that you need to email me if you want to find my email address it's the bottom of the page yeah, I don't answer that phone anymore, by the way. <laughs> Email address should be down here. So I take it out. There it is. If you need to send me your address, that's it. Don't send me a lot of chitter chatter on that email. That's a business email. Don't be sending me videos and just chatting, telling me what's going on on that. I need to keep that one clean for business. That is my business email address. So don't be sending chitter chatter there. Guys, you guys send me about 40 hours worth of videos every day to watch. I can't find 40 hours in a day. So just keep that in mind too. And I get tons of people. If I chit, if I chatted with everybody that sent me stuff, uh, that's all I'd ever do. I love you guys. But uh, sometimes y'all can drown me easy. <laughs> Just remember, you're not the only one sending the stuff to me. There's a whole lot of folks sending the stuff to me. I do appreciate it, though. I do get some content that way. But I can't digest it all. It's like drinking from a fire hose. Hey, that's like me. It takes an hour. Yeah. Well, I got to brush my teeth set up my CPAP machine and do a bunch of other stuff too before I turn in. And I usually check a news article or two. I'm a news junkie, unfortunately. And it takes a bit, yeah, to settle down. It will be at least an hour after I finish this before I turn in. I think it insured, insured? To get it replaced. Oh, what the phone? Hey, Eddie, how you doing? So, yeah, let's 
So here. Oh, shoot, I got to put my password in on my phone. Okay, I don't know if showing me my activity. Okay. Yeah, nothing new today yet on the on that site. CERN, Greg, the interdimensional reptilians are coming. Yeah, I'm not worried about them. <laughs> They're here already. Sam, I will do okay, when you see me on Green Greg's channel, okay. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, yeah, I don't. I done shut all my content here for the night on this channel. So we'll try to do a live on Green Greg's for too long then. Yeah, we ain't tipping over. That's not happening. <laughs> the crust of the Earth is not going to do whoop. It don't do that every twelve thousand years. It's been at least thirty-two million years before it's moved around too much. So that ain't happening. And I can prove it. <laughs> I've already done it. So don't lose sleep over that one. So, all right, everybody. Let it roll. Tell me where you're from, and we're going to call it a night. Tell us where you're from, and we're about to call it a night. Stop the share. Hey, hello. As long as I'll let you know next week. Let you know what, Arnold? Are you trying to strike hitting? Okay. Yeah, we'll try to do one more. I got to figure out a topic, though. It's not so controversial for Green Greg's channel. Because YouTube don't like the war talk. But gardening talk don't do too well over there either. Area 51, East Texas. Yeah, Jason's always married 51. East Texas is a known vector. Well, I was there last week in East Texas. Pennsylvania, Jesse Wilson. Singapore, the flag that ran into the bridge. Oh, yeah. Hillsborough, West Wilkistan. How you doing, Chewy? Good night from Northwest Florida. Twisted Ponies. Now, that's a. you're over on the East Coast. You're up really late, just like New Days. City Slicker, LOL, California. Hey, Black Sheep, you're City Slicker. All right. <laughs> I hope you know where milk comes from. Uh, love and prayers for all you guys from Dallas, Texas. All right, Trevor, that's good. Kim Possible. We got Kim Possible in the house. Southern Maine. Kim Possible. Well, that was a cartoon for Kim Possible. I saw that. Springtime in Carolina. Wisteria and Azaleas. Yeah, you get a lot of Wisteria up there. Sure enough. You got that in Georgia, too. We don't have too much of that around here, but I've seen that down in Georgia, even down in South Georgia. Must be East Coast. Now. Heber, Arizona. Hey, Eddie. That's not too far from my place out there. Heber, Arizona. All right. Do, do a makeup tutorial on green grays. A makeup. Like a makeup. <laughs> uh, and I, I think I'd lose about half my subscribers if I did a makeup video. <laughs> Strawberry cow. <laughs> Black sheep. Milk comes from Whole Foods. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I think I think half my subscribers would bail if I did it. Hey, this did the makeup on. Yeah, I don't need none of that. Most of you ladies don't need it either, to be honest. I think you do, but you really don't. <laughs> electric fence video how to how to pull electric fence pranks <laughs> i don't have one right here though that'd make a fun video that'd give me in trouble youtube would probably ban me for that yeah, that's what they call it getting people hurt or something yeah i'd get banned if i did that on here <laughs> oh i can tell you how to pull some electric fence pranks but that would get me in all kind of trouble 
YouTube will, oh yeah, they would love me if I did makeup videos. Absolutely, they would love me. I'd probably get a whole new clientele of subscribers. That's what they want. Makeup and funny buzzy videos. Uh, fuzzy bunny. Yeah, fuzzy bunny. What did I say? I would love to get some coffee when you're in town. Your favorite? Yeah, the purgatory. That's right, Eddie. I've spent some time at the Purgatory because I was working uh, remotely from there for a good bit of time my last few trips out there. How to electrify the Rio Grande. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, water is kind of, well, yeah, that would be rough. Five years to fix the key bridge. Where is the America's greatness? You know, uh, China puts up a bridge in two weeks although it might be a tofu bridge it might fall apart a couple weeks later you don't think that's what you meant makeup videos no i think it is she's, i think she's kidding me oh black sheep thank you yeah i think straight kitten was just having some fun she was just messing with me all righty folks yeah, I think it's time we call it a night. We've been on here 116 minutes. This is almost two hours. Yikes. So, hey, we might have to do that. I will be back out there before, hopefully before too awful long. I got some stuff to take out there. A lot depends on this job interview process, too. Just remember, milk don't come from Whole Foods. <laughs> you may get it there, but that's not its point of origin. It comes from something and goes moo. <laughs> and you don't pump the tail to get milk out. And contrary to what I told my city slicker buddies growing up. <laughs> Had some fun with them. Anyway, folks, thank you, Super Chatters. Thank you, Mods. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And because the, the platform here just somehow it's not in great enthusiastic love for me. Their love is somewhat less than absolutely outstanding. So please share my videos. Please share them as much as you can. Share them far and wide. There's usually a share button. Go in and leave comments to them. Comment to other people's comments. Get some chit-chat going down there. A, bit. a beard sculpting video. Eh, I don't know about all that. <laughs> I don't even know how to braid hair. All right, new days. PayPal.com token. Yeah, if you go into PayPal, you can put my email in there. It's another way to send it. Just that email I showed you, which is at the bottom of my website pages. You can actually send it to me using the email. That's another way to do it. And then, you, then you're not using that button. You're using whatever your normal PayPal features are. All right, folks. Once again, thank you one and all. Share my videos. And to everyone, I wish you a good, happy, good night. Or day.